I'm using this little stick bait. There it is, SV Dallas. We're chasing them down. Little stick bait is called a Maria Blues Code. It's not in gear. It's in gear. I can't tell the difference. Join us this week as we visit the US Virgin Islands. A small group of islands with a population of just over 100,000 is an official organized territory of the United States of America. Where are we off to? Uh, we are going to explore a waterfall. And a, an old abandoned sugar mill or sugar cane mill. And then a bit of a walk uh, to find it, and then a bit of a hike up a mountain to a waterfall. So I might let you do uh, deal with the dinghy for today, because since yesterday I'm not too sure. Since Alain broke the dinghy yesterday, yeah, we'll uh, I have a break for me. we'll put me in charge. Yeah. Which is awesome, these papayas are just everywhere, except they're all small. Pretty sure we're going to come across some big ones. Just arrived here in the Reef Bay Sugar Mill and uh, let's go have a look at it. Got a fairly decent hike up to the waterfall and uh, should be beautiful, nice and green, good forest, lush. Also got damage in the hurricane, still some stuff here to clean up, but uh, very cool. Sugar was a profitable commodity. Fueled by slave labour, the sugar industry dominated St John's economy until the latter half of the 19th century. Did you know, at harvest time, slave works up to 20 hours a day. This is where the uh, magic happened. Big engine. And this is where they did all the hard work outside. So the horses used to the horses and mules used to walk around the outside here and they basically did a circular motion and uh, as they did that they they turned the gears and they uh, compressed down the sugar cane and got the got the product out and then obviously went into the still inside there and and they uh, processed it save me reading the signs what are these what are these things for again these are boiling these are boiling in pots for the sugar cane for the sugar yeah so after they crushed it they got the juice out and then one of them they feed lime into to remove impurities from the sugar. And then they, they take the rest and they boil it and then cool it. And how long have you been working here for? Uh, at least, I, I guess, guess, 200 years around that. You've been here, you've been here for 200 years. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you've let the place go a little bit. Oh, uh, you know, it's hard to keep it up by yourself. No, fair enough. Let's pay attention here. This is uh It's getting hard. Extreme condition. Extreme condition, side of a cliff. Don't slip, bud. Not only were we on the hunt for a beautiful cascading waterfall, but the famous Tiano petroglyphs. Although not confirmed, a common theory is that they are from pre-Columbian inhabitants and the symbols mean water. So we're just uh, moving around the corner after that awesome walk up to the uh, the dry waterfall. Careful. So our plan is to sneak along St John around the corner. It's crazy how many sailing boats there are, but you can totally understand why, and that's because there's so many places so close, and you're not having a punch into the wind. Well, that's a uh, sailing vessel Delos, a uh, very, very uh, popular and famous sailing YouTube channel. There it is, SV Delos. We're chasing them down. Not really, they're just out here. Can you see the boat? 
Yeah, that boat's just there. Which one? Uh, the one towing the dinghy. But uh, we'll continue on our way, get to our own anchorage. had a school of uh, Trevally. You get a better cast in and let's have a strategy about how we're going to get these things. Before you cast, just see what you can see because they should be around here. Let's uh, show Ebola how we fish. I'm using this little stick bait. Little stick bait, it's called a Maria Blues Code. All right, you want to try and cast straight ahead towards that big rock sticking out. That's a great cast. So the idea here is that she's uh, holding up her rod tip high to get the bite, make that little skip across the top. And hopefully these Trevallis, also known as Jacks, come through and uh, and whacked out lure. There's a fish behind it, there's a fish behind it. He's bubbling. Missed him. Well, I guess no fish for dinner. I don't know what it means, but there's a smile upon your face. And I see something shimmering in your eyes. All right, we've just checked out of the US Virgin Islands and there they are behind us. And we have a really short five mile hop up to the British Virgin Islands, which are right there. The largest island of the BBIs, Tortola, was hit by Hurricane Irma, September 6, 2017. Rebuilding efforts are slow, due to the low levels of insurance. The government itself had a self-insurance policy and virtually none of its building or vehicles were insured. With damage estimated at over 3.5 billion, the population has dropped by more than 10%. It's difficult to see, but uh, they're still repairing. You can see this one straight ahead, the left-hand side, the pink one, the uh, roof is missing. The other one is also being repaired. There's scaffolding everywhere and this is 18 months ago, this. it got so heavily hit. There's pretty much devastation, destruction, widespread throughout. There's yards, there's places with boats like this just here. There's sailing masts that are tossed up into the bushes. That's a mast there. Wow. It's, uh, it's pretty hectic. They went through a tough time. Uh, up on the hill there, it's too far for you guys to see. But right there, there's just a concrete slab. That's all that's left. Nothing left at all. There's no messing around here. This place is dangerous. Yep. Righto, well, given the uh, devastation there in the last hurricane here in Tortola West End, we, uh, we didn't stay long. We just had a quick walk around. Most things are destroyed. Maybe one coffee shop, one bar, that's it. Just gonna pull around the corner now and head to Great Harbour. See how it's spitting out water like that? Yeah. There's either a blockage in the pipe or what I think is wrong is our impeller. So Back in New Orleans, I ordered a spare and we have it here ready to go. So we're probably due, there's no water coming out at all. It is a bit. Yeah, not much, so. Okay, we just arrive. Ebol just carries the engine from the beach to here. So we've got to change the impeller because our water flow is not great and the pipe looks okay. So we're, um, I'm just going to strip this leg down quickly, 
get to the water pump um, under the housing and put a new impeller in quick. And uh, while we're on dry land, it's a good opportunity to do our leg oil and our, and our mains oil. It's been a while, so. It's um, very hard to get it on the boat without dropping stuff in the ocean, so. Decided to find a little shady spot in a public restroom. Okay, so we've done what we can do on this motor. We have changed our main oil. She's got a brand new oil. So basically by undoing this screw here, all the oil drains out. She was just used, she was warm. Um, she drained it all out and then we've just topped it up with the oil from the top here. And then down the bottom here, which is our gear oil, the lower end, basically, let me, sorry about the camera. Let me show you here, there's, I've dropped it in the sand since, that's so all clean anyway. This little screw here comes out, all the, the leg oil comes and drains out there. And then you basically undo the top one and then you pump in the bottom. Keep pump, 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 pump until it spits out the top. So both of those are off. As Soon as it spits out the top, it's full. Screw the bottom one back in, screw the top one in, the leg oil's done. So we've done the leg oil, I've taken the prop off. Um, we've greased up the spline and unfortunately, for whatever reason, I could not get the gear linkage out. I think it's called the gear linkage. I'm sure someone will tell me otherwise. To take off the lower end in order to get to the uh, water pump to change the impeller, it wouldn't come out and I couldn't get the gear selector to do its job. So maybe I'm missing a bolt or something on this model that I haven't done before. So um, at least we've got, you know, most of a service done. We just need to do the, uh, the impeller. As the sun rose the next morning, along came Super Yacht A. At a staggering 143 metres, that's 469 feet, Sailing Yacht A is the world's most expensive privately owned sailing super yacht. The $400 million vessel has a crew of 54 and even has its own rooftop swimming pool. Thanks for watching. See you next week as we mix things up and go on the hunt for our dinner. Make an awesome campfire on the beach before saying goodbye to our friends as they cross the Atlantic. For more exclusive episodes, head over to patreon.com and search Taking the Chance.